Good morning, everybody. I'm Andy, the CTO of ANS. I hope you're well. I'm delighted this morning to um, be hosting this webinar with Sorted.com. Um, I have with me Paul Hill, the Director of Client Operations. How are you, Paul? Good morning, Andy. I'm very well, thank you. Good. Thanks very much for um, hosting this with us today. Hey, no problem. Uh, no problem. So you're going to give us a bit of an insight into Sorted Group, um, really inspirational startup, doing some fantastic things with tech, uh, really, really unique value proposition. And I'm going to hand over to Paul now, who's going to talk everyone through on the call, um, who Sorted are, what they're about, how they deliver innovation at pace, and then we'll do a quick Q&A at the end if anybody's got any, uh, any questions for some further insight. Over to you, Paul. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Andy. So good morning, everyone. Um, so just a quick introduction. You can obviously uh, you can see my name on the screen, Paul Hill, and I'm the Director of Client Operations. Um, so what that means is that um, within Sorted Group, it's my responsibility to try and, and balance the, uh, the, the, the needs and the, the finances and resources and operations across um, both our, our customer base, um, the sales team, our technology um, uh, partners and, and our internal technology teams as well. Um, just to just bear me one second, just while we uh, get this to respond. Okay, so just to kind of introduce um, what the business is and, uh, and just explain a little bit more about Sorted. Um, this is our manifesto, um, and it's it's going to give you, I guess, a bit of a, a a preview into why we do what we do, but I'm going to talk more about that in detail as we progress through the slides. So our manifesto is that we harness the power of, of technology to transform the world of deliveries um, from a complex battle of logistics into a simple, seamless and even uplifting experience. Um, together we are sorted. So what we're trying to do is to inject um, customer experience and, and, and user experience into that, what could be quite mundane um, but challenging world of, of trucks and trailers, logistics, parcel carriers, and, uh, and, and, and logistics from end to end. Um, why we actually do that is because what we know about online retail uh, and retailing generally is that 39% of consumers out there say that they, they will lose faith in a retailer's ability um, if they can't meet their, their parcel delivery needs. Um, so that's quite a compelling, a compelling number, but there's, there's kind of bigger numbers um, out there as well. So 80% say that um, having a live or, or just having access to a live view of their order was actually more important than the cost, the cost of the goods that they were, they were entering into. Um, whereas 79% say that they demand regular updates on the progress of their delivery. So I guess kind of going hand in hand with, uh, with, with one of those previous stats. And 38% and of consumers tell us that um, if we make returning their goods complex, they're very, very unlikely to shop again with that, with that retailer. Um, and finally, 70% say that retailers should offer more flexible delivery options. So these are some quite compelling statistics. And um, I guess we can view these in, in one of two ways, really. These are either... Um, a, a very large risk to us as, a, as a, an online retailer, or these are a, a huge opportunity to drive differentiation between ourselves and our competitors um, if, we, if we look to tackle some of these statements. So within Sorted Group, you know, we call that um, the delivery experience gap. So, so trying to tackle the difference between customer expectation and the actual experience of, of receiving the goods um, that we've, we've entered into. So there's a number of um, a number of service providers that operate in this space. Um, so you know we we engage ourselves um, in in talking to retailers, understanding what it is that they're they're after, and they they help us to place the um, the competitors in this market into into these quadrants. So um, these are, are just some of the competitors that are out there. And what we do is we at Sorted we try to look at this as okay. From the service providers that are out there, kind of technologically speaking, how are they providing their services? What's their tech stack look like? Um, how innovative are they with, uh, with new features and, and bringing innovation or disruption to the market? Um, how are they addressing that, that user experience gap? So if this isn't just about shifting um, parcels, um, through the supply chain and, and, and out into the world of, of parcel carriers. If this is about joining um, together that whole experience and, 
and really trying to maximise um, maximise the, the, the benefits that can be experienced with regards to making that consumer feel good, make them come back and, and shop again and be a repeat customer. What, what can we do about that? So, so Sorted uh, are really setting themselves a really high high target in, in we want to technologically be in that top right hand quadrant. So we want to be regarded as being really high, technically capable business, but also that we're really um, pushing forwards with, uh, with tackling the, the user experience. Um, so this is, this is kind of really serious to us. This forms the kind of basis to all of our, our innovation and, and, and certainly trying to move a pace is, um, you know, it, it is really key to us at Sorted Group. So let's just try and understand exactly what it is that we do, because we, we, we've kind of made some big statements there and said there's some big opportunity out there for, um, for improving consumer experience. Um, so let's try and just kind of position what it is that we do. Um, the, 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 the Sorted Pro work suite, um, as we refer to it, basically can be, can be touched by, by all elements of a, of a client's architecture. So right the way from, from the web front end, um, regarding the purchase, the point at which we're looking to, to convert um, a consumer into a, in, into a paying customer, um, across the warehousing process, um, so from the picking, the packing and dispatching um, element of, of fulfilling that, that order and fulfilling that promise, um, through to, to actually executing the delivery of, of the parcel or, or indeed it could be you know, heavy and large delivery. Um, Sorted provides a solution across that, that full end-to-end -end, um, range of architecture. So, so what we're doing is we're saying we're inviting customers to, to connect all elements of their business um, to the Sorted Pro um, feature suite. And we, we've um, given you some examples underneath um, some of those, uh, uh, those areas on the screen. So we have a... a, a a particular focus on, on tackling basket abandonment. Um, based on, on the statistics that we just played earlier, we know that if you offer, as an online retailer, if you offer customers choice, if you, um, if you give them convenient delivery options, so convenient options to local um, pick-up and, and drop-off points, then we know that that absolutely impacts on, on basket abandonment, so it improves the conversion rate. Um, and this is all based on real-time commitment, real-time promises, not some static table of, well, you know, if the order's worth this, then we can probably pull out the plugs and get it delivered in 24 hours. Um, what we're doing is we're saying, let's understand how the warehouse works, how the fulfillment operation um, can perform, and then let's actually program that into, um, into the configuration items within Sorted Pro. So when we make those promises on the web front end, they're, they're real. They're, 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 um, they stand a, a good chance of being, being honoured because the, the very, very worst thing to do is to make a promise that you can't keep. So, so we kind of maintain this golden thread throughout the, uh, the technology. So when we start to look at how all of that pieces together, um, we've got the sorted hero products, um, so a discrete set of API endpoints that, that regard um, the, the conversation around the promise, what can be achieved. Sorted Pro in the centre, which is, um, is the kind of the operational platform. This is the flight controls, the configuration console behind all of that, um, that carrier management. And then Sorted React is our product for, um, for engaging with the consumers. Um, giving real-time feedback on on progress and, uh, and 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 issues. So you know, obviously aimed at driving customer loyalty and uh, repeat custom. Um, so when we have a look at how those um, those suites of products and, and and different API endpoints fit together, we can see the targets there of of the consumers, the retailers, and the carriers. And we see ourselves as being being right in the centre of uh, of that. Um, I guess that, that there's nothing um, there's nothing revolutionary about trying to handle deliveries in a, a cost-effective, efficient manner. What we're trying to do is that marginal aggregation of improvements. If we can keep everybody 
well informed, whether that's the consumer, the retailer or the carrier. If we can share the data across across all of those parties, then what we can do is, is to maximise maximise the effectiveness of um, of that operation. So once we, once Sorted Pro um, Basket Hero or Sorted React is, is integrated into uh, into a customer's architecture, um, this really is now um, mission critical. So the the actual impact of of Sorted Pro not being available um, it, it is really, really significant. So our customers demand nothing less than, than you know, sort of we put four nines on the screen, but actually five nines. You know, so 99.999% uptime and available. Um, so that means that we've got to take some real, um, real serious um, decisions on on how we're going to host, how we're going to develop. Um, how we're going to um, consider new features, and indeed which which partners we're uh, we're going to work with. So we made the decision to um, to to work with uh, Microsoft Azure as as our hosting platform, and um, we've we've we have used AWS as well in in the wings. So. Um, basically, because most of our customers tell us that if we if we're anything less than than Azure or AWS, then they would consider us too big a risk that they couldn't work with us. Um, so the way that we've chosen to to work is in the first instance, um, we've deployed all of our production services within Azure, and we host a, a, a suite of monitoring tools and administrative tools within AWS. Um, but things things will move on, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in uh, in a couple of slides. Um, but this the, the the point of this particular slide is just to to uh, I guess um, reconfirm that you know uptime and availability, built-in resilience is absolutely key to everything that we do. Um, right now we're we're load tested up to to handling about three billion um, consignments per annum. Um, so 8 million consignments of, of allocations per day. Um, so how do we actually do that? So I guess if there's any um, techies on the on the actual uh, on the conference, then there'll be some interesting bits here. I'm I'm an old school operator, trucks and trailers. Um, I like to see us getting the most out of technology, and uh, and like to ask ask all the questions. Why why does it need to be that way? Um, but this is this is the way that we essentially work. We've we've got a blue green deployment strategy, so we're we're always striving for um, redundancy within our our architecture. But also because we want to um, continuously deploy, um, then what we need to be able to do is to do that without any downtime. Um, it isn't kind of it isn't possible for us to say, oh well, we know when the quiet hours are within uh, within our customers' operations. Our customers are pretty much bar none, 24/7, 365. Um, you know, we might see a lull in in volumes on certain bank holidays, but nothing ever goes dark. Uh, customers are always shipping in in some way, shape, or form. Um, so, geo redundancy across uh, across Azure uh, using uh, West Europe and North Europe. Um, you can see on the diagram our our blue green strategy. Um, with messaging queues being managed in the center and and then database technology um, displayed displayed behind um, so let's just talk a little bit more about why why that needs to be that way um, I've probably mentioned APIs a couple of times um, in the previous slides but just just to be really clear um, we sorted group regards itself as being an API first technology provider um, so we we are expecting all of our clients to be making API calls into our service suite. We do have a very intuitive user interface as well, but that's that's very much a, an administrative um, tool. Um, on the whole, clients will be making um, a high number of API calls into our service suite, which will obviously use um, API management gateway. Um, so we employ a double gateway check um, and will handle all of the session persistency around around um, clients that are accessing that. We're using um, API keys to authenticate um, and we're encrypting data at, at rest and 
at various places at, at transmission throughout the uh, throughout the, the service architecture. Um, so an API first solution. This is software as a service. Um, hosting and an uptime is is obviously absolutely key. So let's just have a little look at our, our cloud journey. Um, I guess with everything that I've already said, it would be no surprise to see um, see some of the features here. But just to kind of rerun what we've done over the last few years. Um, so when we first deployed um, our production systems in 2015, um, they were they were deployed into to Microsoft uh, Azure. Um, we're using worker roles, um, but effectively, if I was summing this up. Um, it's the it's the one virtual machine um, per service. So we are we are service orientated in, in architecture. So um, we've got kind of eight key services, um, but we were deploying those on a on a one to one basis, uh, one to one relationship. Um, SQL Server 2014, uh, Azure Worker Roles, .NET Framework, and, uh, and, and an assortment of JSON XML APIs. So we fast forward to, to 2016-17. Things have moved on some. So we've we've changed from single VM um, images, and we've got multiple services now per per VM. Um, so so these we refer to as our units of infrastructure. Uh, we've really significantly sped up deployments. Uh, so kind of sub 15 minutes um, per service, and. Um, we've, we've moved on to the technology as well, so we've moved on to, uh, to .NET Core. Um, still similar, um, SQL Server 2014 and, uh, and Azure um, virtual machines. Introduced blob storage, um, so really concentrating on speed. Um, speed is another thing that's very critical for, for many of our customers. So internally we use um, the, the 200 millisecond benchmark as our target for all, all kind of internal operations. Um, typically in the outside uh, customer arena that everyone's looking for sub-second um, printing of labels and uh, you know, any other actions being kind of sub-half sub second. Um, so all of these things are constantly on our mind when we're thinking about the technology and, and the architecture. Um, and, and then moving forward, thinking about 2018 and beyond, um, Containerization is is for sure very high on our um, on our list. Um, working with technologies such as Docker and, and Kubernetes, um, looking at different technologies when it comes to databases, so Cosmos, um, and, and really kind of embracing that that cloud native application stack. Um, but I guess one of the key things and, and the reason why I guess ANS had, uh, had asked us to. To, to speak on this occasion, is throughout that that period of utilising Microsoft Azure, utilising different types of technology, um, we've kind of we've learned a lot as we've moved through those uh, through those steps. And, and one of the things that, that we learned was um, from starting off and just purchasing, you know, infrastructure as a as a service from from Microsoft Azure, and then stepping up to um, to looking at PaaS. Um, provision and, and taking out platinum support with uh, with Microsoft. What we learned was actually this is still really difficult to um, to kind of get a decent tune out of uh, um, out of Microsoft and out of the services that we're buying. Um, and we we really didn't feel satisfied with uh, with our platinum subscription and and kind of struggled to get to the end of the the period and. and Look back and say, Do you know what? I feel like we got value for money out of uh, out of out of that way of working. Um, so it was at this point that we we decided to to partner up with uh, with ANS. And I guess for for everybody out there listening to this, you know, it's no surprise that for any business, you know, cash is king. And when we're considering how how we spend our um, hard fought investment, hard fought revenue. You know, we constantly need to question ourselves: what's, what's the biggest return that we can get on uh, on, on utilization of that uh, of that cash? And you know, spending lots and lots of time trying to manage Microsoft and trying to trying to feel like we've got good value out of that platinum um, support package that we used to pay for, and um, just just wasn't the right thing for us. What we needed to do was to say, look, let's partner with someone who who does this. You know. As, as a profession, this is their day job, 
our day job is to make sure that we're up and available for sure. Um, but we've got to think about the, the code, we've got to think about new features. And actually, if we decide where we want to spread, spread our bets, then we would prefer to spend more of our, our, um, our resources actually focused on our product and focused on, on how we're going to keep pushing that forward and keep satisfying that, that need within the marketplace, rather than tying ourselves in knots over are we getting good value from Microsoft and actually is there someone out there that could do this, do this better for us. Um, so, so hence we, we decided to, uh, to partner with, with ANS and, uh, and definitely that's, that is yielding the benefits of reducing our, our expenditure improving uh, our utilization of assets and, uh, and really helping us to then think about, okay, how do we implement containerization? How do we scale um, and hyperscale across, across the globe as, we, uh, as we're more successful and, and start to, uh, to win more clients? So that's, that's probably enough about our technology. Um, just a little bit more about kind of who we work for and, 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 and what we actually do. Um, having talked quite a bit about the why and the how. Um, so these are the kind of clients that, that we're working with. Um, so we can see you know, Dyson, Arsenal, Matalan, Lush Misguided and so on. Um, online retail, that's, that's our game. Um, trying to address that, uh, that experience gap within the, the online retail market. Um, and that, that journey so far has taken us to, uh, to, to 19 different countries um, across the world. Um, integration to over 50 plus um, carrier partners and growing behind every single carrier partner there could be anywhere from from 20 uh, to 100 services so um, you know there's, there's a lot of development work that has gone into this um, supporting different currencies and different languages around the world just becomes the norm really um, our customers are not just shipping to the UK they're not just selling products in the UK or even Europe it's this really is a is a global business and global opportunity. So just to kind of put that into um, into some kind of, uh, I guess, a very brief white paper, um, probably wouldn't take too much of a stretch of the imagination to work out which uh, which UK football team it was, given the previous slide. Um, but the challenge was that um, um, this particular customer came to us with a with a thriving retail operation, um, requirement for global services, multi carrier strategy um, and, and a long-term continuous improvement relationship was uh, was needed. Um, if there is anyone that's, that's on, on the call now that um, kind of doesn't really understand what the, the multi-carrier strategy is, um, very typically way back when, probably 10 years or more, um, it was very normal for, for most retailers to just work with a single parcel carrier. They, they would do a deal, um, that deal would probably extend over maybe maybe one year, two years. Um, very rare occasions, there might be kind of three to five year deals to be had, but it was very much a war of attrition. And, uh, and retailers would go out to, to tender out to market, probably annually, and, uh, and it would be a race to the bottom, really. You know, who can, who can ship this parcel um, for the cheapest value? And as we saw from the statistics earlier, the consumers kind of started to get involved um, in a big way when it came to um, the online side of that proposition, which was, if you just give me the, the cheapest service and tell me it's going to be three to five working days, I'm probably going to go elsewhere. So very much um, kind of the norm these days is for retailers to have a multi-carrier strategy to say, okay, I'll, I'll work with a global, I'll work with a cheap carrier, I'll work with a fast carrier, I work with same day carriers um, and possibly even um, heavy, heavy and large carriers. So you know, parcel uh, parcel deliveries is not the be all and end all. It could be palletized deliveries. It could be two man wide glove delivery services. Um, so this kind of concept of, uh, of a multi carrier strategy is is very much very much becoming the norm. Um, so the solution is is to adopt. Um, some kind of an integration platform, Sorted Pro just happens to be one of those, um, that can say, okay, we can onboard all of those carrier services for you and we can give you one single central place to administer and operate all of that, uh, all of that integration without causing disruption to, to your own technology. So without causing disruption to your WMS, OMS, web front end, 
uh, one integration, and then you can move, switch, and change carriers in the background. Um, what was really cool about that is, is working with this particular client who'd only ever worked with single carrier strategy previously. They saw actually far more um, far more benefits than they were they were originally um, expecting. So in excess of 50% increase in efficiency in the warehouse. And when you start to to kind of unpick that why why is that? It's because of the old 80-20 rule. Um, you know, 80% of orders were easy to ship, but 20% were difficult, and and they actually took a lot more time. Um, they drove up costs, the cost of handling, and the cost of expediting those orders. Um, so actually, when you integrate one single piece of technology that then says, I'm going to provide you with a consistent single way of operating, when you've moved from um, from a kind of a high touch, high contact method of operating um, on single carriers and then really trying to do something special with the exceptions, it, it, it's very, very possible to recognize such improvements. Um, Observing improvements in, in loyalty of customers, customers coming back and ordering more frequently, um, again, helps with that, that kind of repeat, uh, repeat revenue coming through on, on the website. Um, customers, instead of kind of bulk, bulk buying and maybe being attracted to alternatives, buying their products from elsewhere, because they got a really good, really good delivery service and, and they felt as if they were offered um, lots of options. Then again, really demonstrable within those within those um, those statistics of repeat custom. Um, so in the end, um, happy customer, improved operation, um, delighted customers, and, and and basically smiles all around. So uh, so job done, and uh, and hopefully that's the kind of service that we we look to provide to all of our customers. Um, Sorry, technical uh, pilot error there. Um, so the future, what does the future hold? Um, we, we definitely do not want to stand still. Um, so we're constantly looking at, at um, how we can innovate and keep moving at pace. Again, I mentioned previously one of the ways in which you can, you can kind of uh, ensure that you're, you're continuing to move at pace is to identify areas, bottlenecks that could potentially slow you down and, and, uh, and bog you down. And find find different ways of uh, of dealing with that, such as managing as you um, So things that we're thinking about for the future, and where we we have in play, where we're developing these products now. Um, so the sorted app. So this is a consumer app that um, that retailers would be able to to place into their their mobile sites, um, providing all of that real time information without them having to develop huge chunks of this. This um, this type of feature capability within within their own platforms, um, so available either via white label or, or available as a, as a standalone sorted sorted app. Um, that that is complemented by Sorted React, which is our our real time messaging hub. So I guess think um, think similar to to something like Twilio, um, where <coughs> what we're doing is we're, we're managing. And piecing together and mapping all of these very very important messages and status updates that are coming from from the carriers and from key components of our systems architecture and really maximising the use of that by by uh, by hooking it into into the consumers and, and also sorted returns. So because we see that um, the trends for online purchases are growing, as to our our returns and, and it's really becoming a key differentiator for retailers. How efficiently, how easy um, can you handle those returns? Uh, because it can really kind of sour the proposition from both a consumer perspective, but also on the retailer's bottom line if, uh, if returns are not not handled in the best way. So these are all all new features, new developments that we're going to be releasing in uh, in 2018 and beyond. So that's the end of my. Um, my piece, and hopefully I've, uh, I've given you some insight into why we do what we do, who we are, and, and, and why we uh, why we provide the services that we do, um, kind of how we how we bring that to the marketplace, and how we manage that from a technology perspective, and then and then what we do with regards to uh, to some of our products and, uh, and services. Brilliant, Paul. That was that was great. What what a brilliant insight. 
um, and, and thanks so much for, for sharing that with us. There's a few people on the line, so what I thought I'd do, if that's okay, Paul, is if people want to type a question, if you have one, uh, into the chat box, um, we'll give it a couple of minutes there to see if anybody's got anything that they, that they want to ask yourself, Paul, if that's okay. Yeah, sure thing. Yeah, and in the meantime, I think I'll ask one. What? So, obviously, there's lots of stories out there. You, you're a high-growth business, um, really tech-focused. What kind of bits of advice could you give to someone who was maybe in the same position that was embarking on a on, on high growth startup? What 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 kind of advice would you get? Is it, is it any kind of people advice, technology advice, things that you wish you hadn't have done, things that slowed you down, um, anything to do with customers, and really just trying to get an insight? Obviously, when you're fast growth like you guys, you're hitting barriers, you're overcoming them. What what are the kind of couple of main things there that you feel? Um, if you could look back uh, at building such a, a modern tech platform and a modern business, what 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 sort of advice could you give to to some people on the call? Yeah, sure. Um, so there's a, there's a number of things that spring to mind, Andy. Um, I guess my my first one would be um, get get your strategy down, um, it, and it doesn't matter if 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 you know that it's going to change. Just get your strategy down and and start to start to think about how you're going to spread spread your bets. Um, I guess the thing that we've experienced over the last few years is it's very easy to get to get caught up in in that kind of um, local optimization, you know. So looking at looking at very small components within your business and getting all consumed with what are we going to do about this? It's really gritty. It's really technical. It's really difficult, and and it it almost distracts you. It, it doesn't mean that it doesn't need dealing with, but I guess it's that checkpoint of of saying let let's step back. And I know this is a a bit of a cliche because we, we all know this, but it's so, so important to, to say, look, let's just take a step back. Where are we heading to? How does this thing here help us to move to that next stage? What is our next stage? Rather than, we've got a great idea, let's get this thing to market, right, what's the next great idea? I guess, you know, constantly checking yourself against your, your strategy and then changing it, you know? There's nothing wrong with that kind of, that scientific approach of saying, Let's do something and let's really understand what we've done and, and let's, let's judge it on its own merits. Was it successful? Was it not? That could just be as easy as did we make any money? You know, what's the revenue? But when you're in that, that early startup phase, probably isn't that easy because you're, you're, investing, you're investing heavily in, in, in bringing these things to market. You're not necessarily seeing the revenue come back in. So, you know, really understanding how you're going to measure success, um, what your strategy is, and then recognizing the things that are, are, are starting to distract you, that starting to, to kind of pull you away from that path. Yeah. Um, other, other things I guess I'd just throw in there is, again, a bit no surprise is, you know, hire great people. Always hire the best people that you can, better people than yourself, um, so that you, you, you're kind of really challenging yourself rather than just going, Look, just get bodies, get bodies through the door, you know, and, and choose your partners, choose your partners with the same, the same sort of diligence that you would when, when you were hiring your own employees. Um, your partners are just extended employees at the end of the day. So um, I guess those would be my kind of top top three. Brilliant, great stuff. Well, thanks very much, Paul. Paul, we've got a question. Um, so I'll narrate the question if that's okay. So from John. What does the integration with retailer websites look like and how long does it take to do? Okay, so, so typically, so our, our basket, let me just kind of re, um, just re-step through some of the things I said earlier. So we're, we're an API first solution. We've got about 120 API endpoints, which is actually too much really. Um, but what we've done is we, we've made all the components small enough that um, it, it, you can create some really, really highly flexible integration solutions. Um, we, we typically guide customers through that because it, it's kind of too overwhelming to start with. Um, but if we whittle that down and say, okay, what have we got that's used on, on the retailer's website? Then that pretty much is our, um, our basket hero, sorted hero um, product set. So um, in essence, we've got four um, different API endpoints um, that, are, that are aimed at that retailer website. So typically, what a retailer will be doing is saying, hey, I've, I've got an order, I've got a basket. Um, we maybe don't regard it as, as being an order just yet, it's a basket. And um, very typically, what customers will do is make an API call to, uh, to Sorted to say, hey, 
I'm going to tell you something about this. I can tell you um, possibly the weight of the order, maybe not, maybe I've got to use some kind of generic value, but I can certainly tell you where this is going to ship from and where it's going to ship to. So typically that's the first, first call that's made from the, the retailer website is to say, what are my options? Now we have two flavors, two flavors of that, that particular call. So you can um, get uh, delivery options or you can get pickup options. Um, obviously two different pathways. One is going to be delivered to the consumer's um, front door. The other is going to be delivered to a location of choice. Typically, uh, you know, something like a post office or a convenience store or something like that. Two, two, two um, different methods, um, but I guess rooted in the same kind of logic. So the, the retailer will make that call. Um, we will respond with, um, with a payload of, of basically promises. These are all of the promises that you can offer to, to your consumer. And these are real time. So this is based on the date and the time that you ask the question. It's also based on um, the configuration of, um, of, of your own operation, your own warehouse. So what time do your trailers pull away? What time do you stop picking? What time do you, uh, do you need to clear down, clear the decks? Um, we bear all of that in mind when we play back the possibilities, the promises. So first call, what are my options? Response is here's your options. They could be many, they could be few. Um, the next call that the website would make typically is then to select one of those options. So what most of our clients do is that they'll, they'll parse, parse the response that we send and they'll probably display those options um, in like a, a calendar checker. So some kind of a um, choose, your, choose your day of, of, uh, of the week. You know, here's seven days or 14 days of, of, a, of a calendar. Which day would you like? And then once you've chosen the day, um, what, uh, what kind of service would you like? Would you, you know, are you looking for a time service, uh, just a, a nine till five service? So what we do is we, we provide everything. We provide all of the possibilities given that date and time of, of asking the question. And then what we, what we um, allow and, and encourage the, uh, the retailer and the, the web team to do is to decide how they're going to actually display that to the consumer. Some customers will share um, the actual carrier name. So they'll say, would you like a DPD delivery? I can offer you a 9 a.m. Or would you like a UPS delivery? I can offer you, you know, 9 till 5. Um, some retailers choose not to do that. They'll just talk about the promise and say, choose your date, choose your time. Um, well, that's, that's it really. It's, it's no more complex than that. We don't do mashups. We don't try and grab, grab a, a piece of your, your real estate. Um, we just give you the hard facts about what's possible and, uh, and, then, and then let your web developers, your web designers decide what, how you're going to handle that, what you're going to do with that as a, as a customer journey. So they really are building on top of your APIs. They are indeed, yeah, 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 yeah exactly. You know, I've seen I've seen some customers, you know, rattle through that in a matter of days, and yeah. go totally got it. I'm, I'm on top of my technology, so actually, guys, I can exploit those methods really easily. Um, you know, typically, what would I expect? I'd expect probably um, a single dev to go. I've got to make some changes on my website. I want to spend a week or two doing that. I want to spend another week or two testing it, and then I'm happy to go live. So I guess I've seen it done in days, but, but probably more typically is, is maybe, you know, six-week project. Yeah, yeah, great, great. So one final one then, um, for, for me, if that's okay, what's the integration <clears throat> look like from you into the carriers, and how difficult is that? Um, okay, so there's, there's, two, there's two different flavors. Um, and just to give you a very rough, um, a rough kind of proportion. About 90, 95% of customer uh, of carriers, sorry, 95% of carriers, what we call offline integrations. So when when we first go and knock on the door of a carrier, you know, cho choose choose your carrier could be anyone, DPD, FedEx, UPS, TNT. Um, when we first go and knock on the door, um, they will hand us a spec. So we'll have the conversation about, look, can, can we integrate into, into those services? It could be a, one of our customers has actually introduced us to the carrier. 
Um, we've got an awful lot of experience in the carrier space and a number of us uh, have worked for carriers and with carriers. So um, you normally we're ahead of the game. But anyway, 95% of, of carriers work in, a, in an offline integration method. So they'll hand us a, a technical spec. We'll spend a couple of weeks um, consuming that, probably going back, asking more questions because they, they usually don't cover all the bases. Um, we'll spend a couple of weeks developing that integration, a couple of weeks testing, and then it's available and it's live. The the five percent of that um, of that equation um, actually use API. They, they've they've created their own API endpoints. Now we can integrate to those much faster because we're not having to design labels, we're not having to create barcodes and, and build complex routing files and manifesting files. Um, so that's much faster, but it does cause it causes some of our clients a little bit of a worry that um, you know if the if the carrier if their platform goes down, is that going to stop me from shipping? So, so our response to that is um, is that we build circuit breakers. So, if um, if carriers are, don't offer an offline integration solution that we can dev against, and, and they they only offer an API integration, then what we'll do is we'll say, look, this is a multi-carrier strategy. If if your platform goes down, we're going to move on. So we'll move on to the next options. Um, what, what's absolutely kind of paramount to us and, and of, of the highest importance, Andy, is um, it's keeping our customers moving. You know, we've got to keep these very busy websites and warehouses moving. And if a carrier's API goes down, then you know we're going to we're going to do everything we can to to offer alternatives. Yeah, continue shipping. Yes, absolutely. That's that's the key. Brilliant. Well, Paul, we're right on time. So I'd like to personally thank you for, for, for myself and everyone here at ANS for, for hosting that for us. That was a brilliant insight. Um, there's no further questions, so I'd like to thank everybody who joined the WebEx today, and I hope you got something from that. Um, Paul, how can people get you if anybody wants to ping you? A quick one. I know we've got some things there, but you've got, um, you don't mind anybody reaching out to your email or LinkedIn? No, no. If, if they want to drop me a mail, uh, it's dead simple, just paul.hill at sorted.com. Brilliant stuff. Well, thank you, everybody, and have a great day. Cheers again, Paul. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.